let us come back to the second lecture on action research. In this lecture, I will focus on action research. Now, in this I will like to make a presentation the sequence as what is action research, next the characteristics of action research and the third is why people conduct action research. So, why action research and the last is when to use action research. See we have already studied what is a research and I have already introduced the word action research, where I have said in the first lecture that action researches are carried out in a particular situation and the results of action research will only be used in that particular research in that particular situation whenever the problem arises. This particular solution cannot be applied in some other situations. So, it ha it is situational context. So, action research has been defined as action research focuses especially on the unique characteristics of the population with whom a practice is employed or with whom some action must be taken which results in increased utility and effectiveness of the practitioner. This is the definition given by Parson and Brown. Now, action research is defined by Kerr and Chemis and they described action research as being about the improvement of practice as about the improvement of understanding of the practice and the last is the improvement of the situation in which the practice takes place. The action research characteristics are number one, it is a process that improves education in general by incorporating changes. So, whenever in the situation some changes are brought in, then there should be some improvement in the whole in the outcome. The process will change, the outcome will also change. It is a process involving educators working together to improve their own practices. In fact, it is the teachers, it is the educators who have to find solutions of their own problem and as and when the solution is arrived at, then naturally there will be improvement in the outcome. Another is that it is persuasive and authoritative, since it is done by the teacher for the teacher. So, persuasive in the sense that intentionally you have to make efforts to improve the situations, to find out different solutions of the same problem and after getting the solution, you use the solution and analyze the outcome and see that now the outcome is improved one. You can further make certain changes, so that you have a better outcome. Another is that it is collaborative, that is it is composed of educators talking and working with each other educators in empowering 
relationship. That means, action research can be done by a group of teachers. So, therefore, if a teacher himself is doing, if he wants, he can take the help of other fellows. So, therefore, while conducting action research, the help from other people can be taken, the solution thought of can be shared with other colleagues and from the colleagues you may get a new solution or you may get a suggestion which may work better. So, it is not individualistic in nature, it is collaborative in nature. Then another is that action research is participative since educators are integral members not disinterested outsider of the research process. That means, in the action research since it is the teacher who has to do the research. So, therefore, he is in the process and he is the one who is interested in improving the process. So, therefore, he is active and he takes part in it. So, it is participative in nature. Another is that action research is practical and relevant to the classroom teachers since it allows them direct access to research findings. As I have said that in action research, the teacher who is teaching in the classroom, he is conducting it. So, therefore, whatever is done is relevant and therefore, it is practical in nature that because he is doing something, he is not only dependent on the literature available outside. No, he does it. So, therefore, it allows them direct access to the research findings. Now, another characteristics of action research is that it is developing critical reflection about one's teaching. Say each teacher who is interested in improving one's own teaching, one has to critically analyze the whole situation and try to find out where changes are required and if these changes are made, then the outcome will be better. And here the outcome is the understanding of the content by the students. If you want students to be more active, then you have to think of different activities. And once you are doing that, you are doing a critical reflection. The next is that it is planned, it is systematic approach to understanding the learning process. It is not an unplanned activity, it is very systematic in nature as I have earlier said in the definition of research. So, action research is systematic, it is planned, it is never an unplanned one. So, whenever there is a problem in the classroom, the teacher has to decide what to do. He has to plan out the different activities that he wants to carry out in order to solve that particular problem. Now, another is that it is a process that requires us to test our ideas about education. Now, in research the teachers can test their own ideas, they can find whether their ideas are helpful in improving the process of teaching, in improving the process of evaluation or in improving the curriculum 
activities to be carried out in the school. Another can be that action research it is open minded that you have to think openly do not close the doors think in all directions think on all aspects and if there is a suggestion from the colleague one has to take that suggestion and critically analyze it whether this suggestion can help the teacher in improving the classroom teaching. So, it has to be open minded. It is critical analysis of educational plan of work. Say education is not an unsystematic activity, it is a systematic activity. So, whenever a teacher goes into the classroom, he is well prepared. He analyzes the content to be taught and arranges them in the sequence. And when he is doing this, then he is critically analyzing. Now, after that he decides where a demonstration is to be done if it is a science class, where some other activities are to be performed in the class with the help of the student that has to be decided and planned in advance by the teacher. So, therefore, before he starts teaching he has to critically analyze. Next is that it is a justification of one's teaching practice that you can justify whatever you are doing in the class, because you are doing with consciousness, you are aware that why a particular experiment has been done, why a particular assignment has been given to the students. Those things are because they help the students in understanding, they help the students in, in better comprehending the subject matter. Another is that it is cyclic process of planning, acting, developing and reflecting. That means, in action research a teacher involved has to plan out and according to the planning, he has to do the activity, he has to carry it out and after that then he has to develop and he has to reflect. Now, after the activities have been carried out as planned, then one has to reflect back, try to find out whether all the activities done in the process, they help students or they help the other people involved in the process to understand the content better. And if that be done, then that is good. Another is now why do we do action research? This action research is done according to Parkin that the purpose of undertaking action research is to bring change in the specific context. Whenever the teacher as a researcher changes something in the process, this change should reflect some changes in the outcome and these changes are done consciously it is not a unconscious efforts. Now, let us see that when to use action research. Now, number one is action research can be used to understand one's own practice. Whatever I am doing 
whether it is ok or there is a need to change something. If there is a need to change something, I should find it out that why this change is required and therefore, here I have to do an action research. Another is this understand how to make one's practice better. Every teacher teaches and every teacher tries to improve one's own teaching, so that the students can benefit from his or her teaching. So, therefore, one has to consciously analyze the practice, so as to make it better. And another is that understand how to accommodate outside changes in one's practice. See, education is not static, it is dynamic in nature. The curriculum is changing. The students coming to the classrooms are not the same as they used to be 40 years back. Now, lot of changes are taking place. So, through this action research, one can try to find out that how to change, so that these changes can be taken care of. And another is understand how to change the outside in order to make one's practice better. See, whatever is done in the school, in the classroom, there are certain things which are related to the classroom situation which is inside. There are certain things which are outside the classroom also. One has to take into cognizance both these things and try to bring change, so that ultimate goal of making students to understand the content taught or bring changes in the students which the teacher have thought beforehand. Now, in order to that the this action research is a must. Thus, in this episode I have tried to explain what is action research, why action research is to be done and when to do action research and what are its limitations. In the next program, I will like to focus on importance of action research and why everyone does not do action research and what are the limitations of the action research. <laughs>